Time to go on the docket with Attorney John Patrick Dolan as he breaks down all of your legal headlines. Good morning. Thank you, John. Good morning. Uh, today we're talking about Drew Peterson. What's going on with that case? Well, that case is coming to a close from the point of view of the prosecution today. The prosecution is scheduled to complete their case. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, does the defense put on an affirmative defense or do they simply argue that the prosecution hasn't proven their case? I think it might be the latter in this case, although we'll, we'll find out very early this afternoon. And what was it that he did again? Well, it's his third wife that he's accused of killing. His oh. wife was... Uh, uh, found dead in a bathtub. She was buried with the idea that she fell down and, and killed herself or, mm. or was killed that way. But her body was uh, exhumed. There's been testimony that the injuries are not consistent with the fall. And his fourth wife is missing. Uh, and his fourth wife apparently had made some statements to a pastor uh, incriminating him regarding the death of his third wife. Big controversy about whether or not that should have come in. And we'll see. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough case, but it's a very strange case. And frankly, the guy is not a nice guy. Most people get the opinion that he's not a very decent person. Um, and so um, the personalities become uh, a big part of the decision making, I think, for the jury in this case. Wow. And then we have James Holm, who is uh, accused of the shooting at the uh, theater in Colorado. Now, there have been reports saying that he was telling people that he was going to kill people and had gone to see different counselors. So how is this going to change things or will well, it change Well, the things? original issue in that regard was that he had told a mental health professional that he had some uh, fantasies of killing people. Not enough to rise to the level where there was an affirmative duty to go out and warn. Uh, the latest reports are that he was telling other individuals about the same thing. And the question is, does this create liability on the part of anyone else? Probably not, although in one way it helps the defense because the defense now can show there's a history here. This is not some guy who's making up a story. This is a guy who's apparently had some mental disease or defect that was uh, clear or at least expressed. Um, uh, on a regular basis before this happened and that may very well play into sort of like what happened with Gerald Loeffner where Jared Loeffner where they decided that they would allow him to plead guilty in return for taking the death penalty off the table that may very well be what happens in this case all right we're also talking about the Fort Hood case what's going on there well the interesting thing is uh, Nadal Hassan has said he does not want to shave his beard because he wants uh, as part of his religious freedom to be able to express himself by uh, having the beard. Um, he's in the military. It's a military court martial. There is a, a hold on the case right now while the appellate court takes a look at it. But frankly, there is precedent for the military holding him down and shaving him. And that's what they're talking about doing now as part of the decorum in the military, holding him down and shaving him and then proceeding with his military courts martial. Wow. Mm. Well, thank you so much sure. for filling us in on the latest local uh, headlines here locally and nationally. You're always filling us in, so thank you so much. Indeed. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of John Patrick Dolan, just go to his website, dolanlawoffices.com. You can ask him any questions, give him a call. The number's right there, and we'll see you back here next Monday. All Thanks, right. John. Indeed.